There are many causes for homelessness, unemployment or underemployment, physical and mental health issues, life-altering events such as the loss of a loved one, an inadequate foster care system in war, to name a few. The City of Cambridge Division of Statistics reported as of 2014 over 500 people with no official residence lived on the streets in temporary shelters in Cambridge. There are only two shelters that serve service Harvard Square with 43 beds. Eight people were interviewed, only three are included in the documentary No Room at the Inn. The tone is serious as I share their realities of living on the streets in Harvard Square. On a brisk January day, I completed my first interview with a young musician where he lived. Could you talk about maybe where you're staying and uh, how uh, you're managing? I usually stay on the streets, you know, or train stations, or, you know, it, de it depends. I try to, I try to move around and not keep it, I try to not really keep a pattern. It's just, yes. It's just, uh, now you um, you told me you needed to be here six months. Could you explain that? No, I just um, in order for me to get a housing voucher, I need to wait at least six months. In Cambridge. Yeah. Okay, and how, how long have you been playing? I've been playing guitar and music for seventeen years. My name is Kevin. I've been homeless since nineteen ninety four. I moved it. I was placed into an apartment that I didn't get along with the neighbors, and uh, I, 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 instead of going in for a transfer, I stuck paying rent, and I was evicted uh, in, in March of 1994. My daughter was born in January of 1994. She turns uh, 21 this year, and that's how long I've been homeless. Can you tell me where you're living at night in the cold like this? Well, I stay on some friend's couch. When I'm not there, I'm in the shelter down in Boston. What they call intake, the temporary, they have a temporary shelter until they establish a, 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 a new shelter that's opening. I was staying at the Long Island shelter, but they closed that down because the bridge that leads to Long Island shelter needs work on it. It's dangerous to cross. But you are not sleeping out on the streets at all. No, I'm trying to avoid that at all costs because I'm in the center. healthy at all. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Robert O'Regan. I've been out here on these streets on uh, Harvard Square for uh, a few years now, ever since I got out of the military. Uh, I joined after high school, but my, uh, my father said it would probably pass for my life. And uh, it did. It gave me structure, discipline, and everything I needed. But some of the things that happened in there aren't really good for us when we come back. Uh, I was witness the Ford shooting, got shot twice then. And I'll tell you, it was 130 degrees every day. We carried over 100 pounds. You got your rattle, rattle gear, your flak vest, your, your helmet, which weighs 15 pounds, M16 that weighs most 8 pounds, and all the ammunition, which is another 20 or so, and a 60 pound rucksack. So you got long sleeves and that. It was, it was torturous, and all I wanted to do was make sure my friends got home to their families. That's, I, I, didn't, I didn't just do it for just, you know, the Patriots. My friends were going over there. I get out and now I have all these problems and I don't know how to deal with it. I go to the VA for help and uh, they can only help us so much. There's so much of us out here, almost veterans. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's almost, it's, it's unfair. I don't know how, how this happens to all of us, but it's, it's almost, we all share very similar stories and um, it's tough out here. It is. How did you become homeless? How did you? I, I got out, I did masonry, and because of my injuries, I hurt my L5, and I got my ball hole in my leg, my back. I have been able to do construction like I was. I was a 21 Bravo engineer in the military station in Fort Worth, Texas, 
and not, I can't do construction anymore. And my mental state is, let's just say, not, not perfect. As I wandered the streets, I listened to the voices of forgotten people we often pretend not to see. Occasionally, as I walked home from class, my interviewees would shout, Have a good night. See you tomorrow. You need more footage, I'm here. I will be forever haunted by those who slept in doorways, with the snow blanketing their clothes and bags.